Hello everyone, it's Chantel from Crow Chantel, and welcome to this tutorial on how to crochet a sphere. So the materials you'll need in order to crochet a sphere of any size includes a crochet hook, a sewing or darning needle, a stitch marker, I personally use a bobby pin, some scissors, a yarn type appropriate for your hook size, as well as stuffing, and I personally use polyfill. You will also need to have a basic understanding of the single crochet, increase, decrease, and magic ring. To start off our sphere, we're going to create a magic ring. I personally like to close off my magic rings before I start working single crochets into them. This can help prevent the yarn from tearing. For the first round of the sphere, we are going to be working six single crochets into the magic ring. Some people prefer to use eight single crochets and increase in intervals of eight, but I personally prefer the six single crochet method. Now that we have finished row one, we will get started on row two. And for this row, we will be working an increase into every single stitch around, which is a total of six increases. By the end of the row, you should have a total of 12 stitches. And just as a reminder, an increase is a very simple stitch. All it is is working two single crochets into the same stitch, rather than just putting one single crochet in per stitch. Now that you have completed round two of your sphere, you are prepared to increase it to however large you'd like it to be. For reference, see the chart that's on the screen. This gives you instructions on how to increase your sphere to any size up to 72 stitches around. For this video, I will be making my sphere 24 stitches around, but feel free to make yours bigger or smaller than that. I have now finished increasing to 24 stitches around and you can see that that has equaled a total of four rows. After increasing to your desired size, it is now time to do rows of single crochet. There is a very simple formula to decipher how many rows of single crochet you will have to do. A simple rule to follow is to add the number of rows that you increased to one, and then that is the number of rounds you should single crochet for. For example, I increased to 24, which is a total of 4 rows of increase. I will then add 1 to that to total 5. So therefore, I will have to do 5 rounds of single crochet. As an additional example, let's pretend you increased to 36 stitches around. That means that you increased for a total of 6 rows, and if you add 1 to that, that totals 7 rows. You will therefore need to single crochet around for a total of 7 rows. I will now go off camera to complete my last rows of single crochets, and when I return we will start to get into how to decrease and close off your sphere. I have now finished my 5 rounds of single crochets, and will now be getting into the decreasing portion of the sphere. I will include on screen how to decrease from one amount of stitches to another. Since my sphere was 24 stitches around, I will look on the chart where it shows how to decrease from 24 to 18 stitches. In order to do that, as you can see, I will have to do two single crochets and then a decrease, and do that for a total of six times around. Now that I have finished decreasing to 18 stitches, I will be decreasing to 12 stitches around. So that means I will have to do a single crochet and then decrease for a total of 6 times. Once you start decreasing, it's important to consider when you should start stuffing your sphere. It's important to consider if your fingers or hand can fit into the thing that you are wishing to stuff. Since my sphere is not too big, I am going to decrease to 12 before I start stuffing, but you can choose to start stuffing when you hit 18 stitches. It is ultimately your choice with how comfortable you are with getting stuffing into the shape. 
going back to my sphere, you can see that it is now 12 stitches around, and I will begin the stuffing process. It's important to make sure that you get your stuffing to the bottom and that your stuffing is not in clumps, as this can cause unwanted lumps in the side of your work. When stuffing, I like to really squish and move the sphere around in order to make sure that it is being shaped correctly. Once again, you do not want any lumps as this can take away from your sphere-like shape. Be sure to not overstuff your work. The stuffing could end up getting in the way of your crochet hook and then it would make your work a lot messier than you would like it to. You can always add more stuffing near the end, so just take your time and work stuffing in slowly. You don't have to do it all at once. As you can see, I am now decreasing from 12 to 6 stitches. So all I am doing is doing 6 decreases around until I get to 6 stitches. To finish off your sphere, all you will have to do is do a slip stitch into the next stitch after you finish your last decrease. You can then cut off your yarn, but be sure to leave a tail so then you can sew the opening closed. This is when you will use your darning needle. I like to close off my pieces by weaving the yarn through the front loops only of each of the stitches. Once you have finished that, you will pull tight until the opening is closed. Once you have closed the opening, you can then tie a knot and be sure to tie a knot to keep the opening closed. I tend to do a simple knot and then weave the end into the ball. You have now completed your sphere. You may now be wondering how you can increase or decrease the size of the spheres you make. One of the most obvious ways to make your sphere bigger or smaller is to add more or less increases when making your sphere. But another way is to change your hook size. On the screen you can see on the left that I have a larger sphere and on the right there is a smaller one. They use the exact same weight of yarn, I just use different hook sizes. The one on the left I used a 5mm, and the one on the right I used a 4mm. You can also play around with the yarn weight to make it bigger or smaller. Now that you know how to make these spheres, you can use them for a variety of different amigurumi projects. Some of these include using the spheres as heads, using them as fruits, or even using them as ornaments. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope you will return to watch my other videos in this series on the Amigurumi Basics.